Hey everybody, it's Gamalad. Welcome back to Let's Play Return of the Popola Croix, a story of Seasons Fairy Tale. In the last episode, we began filling up the mountain flambeau with the flames needed to enter into the first real dungeon. To do so, we had to go through all these different field dungeons. In the last episode, we took on two. I found field dungeon number three, so let's explore this dungeon and liberate it. This, this field dungeon has been overtaken by darkness, so you wish to leap in and purify it. You bet you did, we do! Like I said, I won't, I won't say you bet your sweet bippy anymore, because I'm pretty sure that's a very cringeworthy line. Oh, okay, a new type of dungeon! Alright, so we don't have the, the normal green grass-like scenery, and we get into a battle right at the start of this. What are the odds of that? And we can't even move anywhere in this, in this arena. Okay. Uh, Pumpkin Man, do something! Oh, get the bat! Oh, cool, he one-shot the bat, nice. So, um, yeah. So basically this episode, the whole plan is to hopefully get the fl uh, get the flame flam- uh, the mountain flambeau to- Oh wow, we're getting some real bad luck right now. Get the mountain flambeau to the- f to its fullness, so we can actually go and progress into the game's main story more. And hopefully unlock a lot more farming stuff, because I know a lot of you guys want to see more farming as well. Don't worry. Ooh, nice, a crit. But hold on a minute, Pumpkin Man, if all you have to do is hold your hammer back a little bit longer to do the crit, why don't you do that after every attack you do? I mean, that just makes more sense, I guess. Yeah? Oh well. The reason why I haven't been showing off much farming lately, because I do do some farming off screen. The reason why I haven't, because like unlike regular Story of Seasons, um, the farming is, is really done passively in this game. As in, I plant crops to grow while I'm playing through the game. Um, guess in because you know in Story of Seasons the crops mainly um, you know how the crops will just grow in in game time. The crops in this game grow in game in real time. So I think it takes like five minutes for some crops to grow. So I just like record. I just not record. But I plant the crops before I start recording so they can be fin done growing when the recording is finished. I may um, in the future once we unlock some more farm stuff like animals and different crops. Go into it in a bit more detail. Wow, we're going in a real roundabout way here. Okay, so we went an entire circle. And we get into a battle for our reason for our time for going in a circle. Oh, I hate those little guys. These things right here. Um There's like five little guys. They do so much damage, and they're like so annoying to kill that they have very high defense. So I try to focus most of my energy on them first. The Piltrin 5. Like they can usually do a lot of damage though, if you if you, if you leave them to their own accord. So we try to take them out as much as we as fast as I possibly can. As you can see, they're taking quite a few hits to actually take go down. All right. Um. Okay. Blue wolf or blue, just go for the, just or you can just stay, I guess. All right. Pumpkin man, thanks for taking him out. And that should do it. Yes, it did. Cool. Um. So so yeah, that basically ex um, explains how the farming in this game works as of now. Hopefully, it'll be a bit more fleshed out as we progress, but I know for a fact it probably is going to be. So, again, let's continue for this field dungeon, hoping we can find that boss without having to go into too many random encounters. As I say that, we get into a random encounter. Alright, that battle was a bit more tedious than it needed to be because of all the different obstacles that were in the way there. But yes, hopefully we can find there are our exit of this dungeon with relative ease. Um, anything over down this pathway? Oh, treasure! What do we get? Okay, got some fur. Nice. That may be worth something, or we can get into more random encounters. This is going to be a big thing, though. I feel like I need to play the lottery or something, because I seem to be calling these random encounters quite well. Oh, well. So, we're getting into the random encounter. Alright, let us continue our trek through this little, this weird field dungeon-like thing. Like I said, it may come a time in the future where I just cut out the entire, my entire trips in these field dungeons, because... They're extremely linear, and there's not any many puzzles or anything like that um, in them that would require any, you know, real attention. So all I would pretty much would do is in the future just would just you know highlight the map, um, showing off which path I came to get there. But even then, since we have a, a um, you are here cursor on me at all times, and the map is pretty detailed, you should actually figure it out yourself too. So. I'm not sure. Um, let me know you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you guys want me to cut out most of these field dungeon type things? Because it really is just running through a linear hallway after linear hallways to get to the end. Um, I will t when I see its feedback from that, I'll take that into consideration and how I handle this in the future. Because um, I, 
the, the, my problem is with, with these field dun dungeons are, I don't have much to really say over them, to be quite frank. It's just, again, running through uh, straight hallways. Not much is really going on until these said random encounters appear. But, um, that's either here nor there. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Alright, level up for blue. Nice. We'll also have another field dungeon in this battle as well, because, or this battle, this episode, because we have to get to the, wow. That was an entire roundabout circle. We went full circle there. All right, you stupid boss. Where could you be? I'll reach you to the random encounter. Okay, there's an entire other branch of this dungeon I haven't really checked out. So I'm gonna get you guys back over there. Okay, now now I can't believe I didn't I, I didn't catch on to the pattern this dungeon was having. Here is our our boss like enemy we need to take out so we can liberate this entire place. Once again, this guy really should be a bit of a pushover compared to like you know the other ones we we've had to fight. Just spam our skills and just do a lot of damage to it. And like I said, since there is no real way to indicate how much damage we've done to these enemies, it's a bit of a pain. But we'll, we'll have to trudge, uh, trudge on and go forth with that. Alright, so Pumpkin Man, use your hidden missiles! Or, you know what, I don't care. I'm calling it hidden missiles because where did he pull this thing out of? It has to be hidden missiles then. All right, Pietro, use your wind slash. Eh. Or how about let's see, let's see. Um, spawns a friendly beast of ice that charges all enemies um, along a straight line. Combines the power of sword and fist into ooh. There, okay, let's see how much damage this does. Cross judgment. Do a lot of damage, please. For all that fanfare, you think it would have done more than 141 damage? Oh well, what can you do, really? So yeah, it's pretty much just these boss fights. Just throw everything in the, throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at it, and they will eventually go down. So I guess in the meantime, I'm supposed to cut ahead until this thing is well, no more. Because at this point, we're we have it cornered, and it's the only thing really on the screen fighting us. So I'll meet you guys back here momentarily once this thing is taken out. All right, that guy went down actually a lot easier than the last two. He did go down quite a bit easier compared to the last two um, field bosses we took out. But hey, he's taken out, and this should increase the flame on our flambeau. Pietro and company have reclaimed a portion of the land of land's blessing of Urb Urbane. The mountain flambeau is glowing a little brighter now. Just one field to go. Now, the problem is, I don't remember where I saw the last field. Well, I have an idea where it is. I don't. I have to go and double check. But now that this land has been re, re, returned to its normal state, we just have one more to find. So I have an idea of where it's going to be. So I'll meet you guys back there in a second. Hey everybody, it's Gamalad. This is a bit of a test stop where I can, you know, use the, the blah 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 blah. And here is where the spot was this entire time. It's actually on Mount Urbane. There's actually two spots up here. Who would have thought it? Not me, because I completely missed it. I'm pretty sure some of you are probably saying, Oh no, it's over there! But no, here it is. Let's go delve in. This field has been overtaken by darkness. Do you wish to take leap in and purify it? Yes, we shall. We shall take this leap into it and see what we can do to purify this land. Hopefully, we can be able to uh, get a lot done here. Uh, okay, so... Another field dungeon. Let's see if we can get lucky. I think this field may have the same layout as the other one. I could be wrong, but let's take a look at looking at the ground. We get into a random encounter. Go figure. Oh, it's a bunch of orcs. Well, ooh, actually, you know what? I probably should be preserving my SP, but I want to just get rid of these guys as fast as I can. So any attack I hit all of them at once is definitely an attack I want to use. Unfortunately, I didn't defeat any of them. That's unfortunate. Alright, the bat's done, because that bat can actually drive you really batty. He has a move that can, that can confuse your teammates, causing them to attack each other. And if Pumpkin Man, say if Pumpkin Man gets confused, that does a lot of damage. Trust me on that one. Because I, he almost took out Pietro in like, in like two hits. But alright, oh, punk, speaking of Pumpkin Man, he's almost at a level up too. Nice, nice, that's even better. So let's head on down this long and winding path. Um, this is a fork in the road. Let's see what's um what lies up here. I should probably mention I also I also turned down the encounter rate. Um because even at medium encounter rates, it was getting a bit too hectic and was becoming a real pain to edit. Um Alright, cool, some frosty cabbage seeds. If I become underleveled, I will just turn on my encounter rate on to real high 
and just like run around in circles to grind for levels. As you can see, in that time span where you got into one battle, I would have gotten into two or three battles, and that was just something I really did not want to have any part of, to be to be frank. Uh, well, that's an waste of an earth break, so um, he can't reach any of them. That sucks. All right, Blue, do your thing, or not? Okay, Pumpkin Man, what can you, what can you do? All right, hit the bat. Darn it! Oh, he finished him off. Cool. I thought he was gonna finish him off. All right. And Pietro, um, use a fire break. We have, we have enough SP to spare. And let's see if that'll finish these guys off. I'm gonna go with a doubt it, but hey, you never know. I could get lucky. Oh, of course, one orc remains. Oh, well, one has to live to tell the tale of me beating up all their friends. Now, I kind of wonder, though, where since we're microscopic, why are all the monsters, these type of monsters even down here? Wouldn't we be fighting, like, bugs and other microscopic organisms? I know we're fighting, we, we fought like an, um, an amoeba type thing, but uh, I almost said an amiibo type thing. Uh, thanks, Nintendo. But, um, yeah, you think we find like some bugs, which it looks like we're in like the soil or, of some sort. Alright, can this be the right path? No, but we got treasure for our troubles. Okay, we got a cute ribbon. I doubt that's me for Pietro to wear. I kind of wonder though, um, will these treasure chests actually respawn if we come back after we clear it? I don't know. I'm gonna have to actually test that theory out. And see what happens. I should probably also see, should apologize if my tone sounds completely different from the first episode. Um, I'm actually recording this part of the episode at an entirely different date. Yeah, the, the first time I was recording, I wasn't really feeling too hot. I made an update video about this yesterday. I may have a link to it down in the description bar below about a lot of things going on with my channel. So, yeah. So I decided to just like, I decided to just get up, take a breather, and come back to this game later. Because I could not, for the life of me, find this last patch until I was like, Oh, wait a minute. I never took this pathway on this mountain. Oh, what do you know? It's the right pathway. Uh, go figure. Alright, Pumpkin Man, finish this guy off. Alright, he was no match for the almighty Pumpkin Man. He is the servant of the Great Pumpkin. Oh, Charlie Brown. Alright, one orc left. What's you gonna do? You're gonna get a critical. What other thing would there be for an orc like you to do, but get a critical hit? All right, Pumpkin Man, finish this guy off, or or or, or not? Okay, I thought it would be really cool. Pumpkin Man can finish him off, but now nah, you got punched instead. All right, the battle is won. Hey man, all right, cool. Levels up for Pietro and for Pumpkin Man. Nice. All right, let's see. There's only one other path we can probably go down in this dungeon, or probably two more by the looks of it. Hey boss, hey boss thing, are you down here? If so, can you show up? Okay, oh, we're going for another dead end, another dead end. <sighs> I get the feeling the bosses are always going to be in the opposite direction. I, the, the one direction I did not pick. <laughs> That's just my luck in all honesty. Oh well, what can you do really? Okay, and even the earth break wouldn't reach. That's unfortunate. Uh, actually, can I run? Run away! Okay, good, our party fought the battle. I... I decided to use it a lot because I would get into like all these battles I did not want to fight in, and I just feel like yeah, running away is my best option. Um, just don't just don't abuse the running away because you will actually lose money from time to time. Okay, another fork in the road. Let's go down this fork. I got a good feeling about this. Actually, no, I don't. I feel like this this is the wrong path again because the bosses are normally like in, in like those like little areas that, that that indicate hey, we're a boss monster. Oh, is this this feel looks weird? I'm running. I'm running. Run away. All right, cool. And sometimes what really sucks is they'll say, the enemy is blocking your path from escaping. And I'm like, but we run the opposite direction of wherever the enemy is. And oh, okay. Here's the here's the boss. Awesome. I didn't think he'd actually be in this spot. I thought we'd actually have to run all the way back or something. But we know the strategy here. You throw everything at him, including the kitchen sink. That's the best way to fight this guy. <laughs> Because then they'll go down relatively easy. I don't know if we'll actually get. A, I don't know if I'll have to cut ahead to me defeating him or not. But we'll see how this battle um, commences. Um, actually, no, 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 no. Use your hidden missiles. I don't care. It's a hidden missile. So that missile should, should do a nice amount of damage. Only 105. It seems like we're capped out at 100 damage per attack. But oh well. Um, not wind slash. Let's use a, let's use a fire break. All right, and Pietro did a little dinky little slash, and it took him out no problem. And level up for blue, nice. Sorry, I just cut that out because the fight was just going into a game of of, um, of um, rock paper scissors at that point. All right, and that should have our mountain flambeau filled up to maximum capacity. Well, it should, unless the game's saying, "Oh, we must do something else first. 
All right, all right, so now what? Whoa! The mountain flambeau is now fully lit. Pietro, so how's that thing looking? I don't think it could get any brighter. We really did it. Mr. Hero, you're the best. Let's take it back to the uh, Matthew Village and show it to the mayor. Yes, we shall. Are we gonna are we gonna quick travel there or no? We're we're gonna have to walk all the way there, aren't we? Fantastic. All right, so I'll meet you guys back here in a second when we go see the mayor. So see you there. See you there in a moment. The question is, have your actions been reflected in the mountain flambeau? It's nice and lit. Dear me, I've never seen it glowing so brightly before. You've more than proven your worthiness to enter the mountain ruin. As promised, the right is yours. Just stand in front of the door, hold the flambeau above your head, and that's it. The door should open right up. You'll need to be very careful inside, though. No humans have been in there for a very long time. There's no telling what you might encounter. All right, we'll do our best to be careful. Restore the light to the mountain flambeau received from the mayor. This can be done. Yeah, okay, yep, we did that. Success. So that's really good. So, next time on Let's Play, returning to Popolacroix, a story of Season's fairy tale, we shall be going up into the mountain to do the whatever challenges are up there as I go through the wrong door. Fantastic. If you enjoyed this video, you should leave a comment down in the comments section below. Let me know what you guys think of the series so far. And as always, everyone, this is Gamma Lad signing off.